Today, I want to give you all a look at my current hat collection. As of this recording in 2021, I have a total of 31 hats, ranging from cowboy to fedora to derbies and from custom made to off the rack. The majority are beaver felt, but I do own hats made with other materials, including wool. And I'll note which ones those are as we come across them. I wear a size seven and three eighths hat or a size 59. So it isn't always easy to find a lot of vintage hats in that size, but I do have a few of those in my collection as well. I also own a couple of flat caps. There are certainly occasions that I enjoy and in fact prefer wearing those. So I'll give you a closer look at those in this video as well. Now with all of that said, let's dive in. Starting with the very first hat I ordered for cowboy action shooting. This Boss of the Plains beaver style felt hat from Clearwater Hats has about a four and a half inch brim and a five inch crown. This one is labeled Silas Carrington Beaver Brand Hats, Savannah, Georgia. I bought it off from Clearwater Hats website in probably 98 or 99. Now it looks like they refer to this hat as the Tucson and they no longer list it in this color. Now, speaking of this color, most of you know, I shoot black powder typically out of an 1866 Yellow Boy rifle, and that tends to kick the brass, the dirty black powder brass, up and back. And while it often flies over my head, sometimes it doesn't. In those cases, it's sure to land on my hat, hitting the ribbon and bouncing around on the brim. And you can see the brim of this hat is very, very dirty because of all the action it's seen. It can be cleaned up with some effort, but I think this dirty look works well on this hat. It gives it plenty of character. Next up is this Resistol brand, George Strait Edition. It's been reshaped from its original design, which was the two side pinches in the crown. I didn't really care for this hat in that style on me, but I like it shaped this way. And for an off the rack hat, I do like the fit of the Resistol brand quite a bit. Next up is a Stetson cowboy hat. It's a 4X beaver, and it's also been shaped into a similar style as the Resistol. I don't care for the vent holes in the side of this hat, but it doesn't bother me too much, so I still wear this hat. And I'm a big fan of the band on this one. Next is the first custom hat I had made. It's a nice beaver hat with a vintage hat band. I don't remember the maker's name. It was close to 15 or more years ago that I had this hat made. And I don't think the fit and finish quality of this hat is on par with later hats in my collection by makers such as Michael Miller or Art Fawcett. Now, speaking of art, this seems like the perfect opportunity to take a look at the eight Art Fawcett hats in my collection, starting with the Lone Star. The weight and fit on this hat with its wide three inch brim and five inch crown is top notch. When I originally purchased it from Art, it had an orange ribbon on it, but I had him swap that out for a more versatile green as I was having trouble finding anything in my wardrobe that went well with the orange ribbon. Because of its color, this hat is one that I would never use on the range. It would just get far too dirty too quickly and it would be very difficult to clean those black powder stains off this hat. But it makes an excellent hat for those warmer days when a heavier, thicker beaver hat might be too warm and a straw hat might not be warm enough. Speaking of straw hats, I do have a couple of straw hats by art. The first being this Panama hat. Everyone needs a Panama hat in their collection. I bought mine specifically for Michelle and Derek's outdoor wedding in July. It worked out perfect for that and this Panama continues to see use on warm days. It's an Ecuadorian straw body shaped by art with a two and a half inch bound brim and a five inch crown. Another Art Fawcett hat in my collection is this one of a kind, all hand woven, custom designed and shaped straw bowler or derby if you prefer. This hat with its two and a quarter inch brim and a four and three quarter inch crown is gorgeous inside and out and definitely one of the highlights in my collection the shape and texture and care that went into its design 
build and shaping is what you would expect from a master hatter like Art Fawcett. And the fact that he autographed it for me adds even more to its personal value. And that brings us to the very first hat I ever had Art build for me. One that you're all very familiar with because I did a full documentary length episode highlighting this build with my friend Art Fawcett. If you haven't seen it, definitely go and watch it. Not only will it give you all the details about this hat, but also a little insight to how these custom beaver felt hats are made. Jessica liked this versatile hat so much, she had Art build her a matching one just before he retired. And Art has also built me a couple of derby style hats, both of which I featured on separate episodes of Jedi TV. The derby is probably my favorite hat style, and I wear them a lot when I'm shooting. As you can see, the lighter ribbon on this brown one has taken its fair share of dirty brass hits. Those black powder stains are not as noticeable on the maroon ribbon of this black cherry hat, which you might recall when I had this hat built, I had Art build a matching one for my sidekick, Kook. Like my other Derby and my Panama and my Grey Fedora by Art, both of these bowlers have the unique and recognizable signature Art Fawcett knot. But I don't think the camera and lighting do justice to this particular hat. When the sunlight hits this black cherry, it has a wonderful cherry red hue to it. It's one that you've just got to see in person. Speaking of unique Art Fawcett hats, the Rancher is the only Art Fawcett cowboy or Western style hat in my collection. And that's mostly because Art didn't do a lot of this style of hat. So when I saw this design and I tried it on, it was love at first sight. And it's one of the hats that rotates regularly into my daily wear. Another unique thing about this hat is that it's the only one in my collection made with Nutria fur. Nutria acts similar to the rabbit and beaver pelts, but it has a very different texture to the fur. And while hatters can give all furs a different level of finish, this particular Nutria hat has hair that is just a little longer, giving it a soft feel and a very unique look to an otherwise traditional Western shaped hat. The rancher has a three and a quarter inch brim, four inch crown, and a braided rope style hat band. And finally, wrapping up the hats in my collection made by retired hatter Art Fawcett is the Bobby Blue. This is a very traditionally designed Art Fawcett vintage silhouette fedora. It's a very dressy midnight blue with a vintage band, traditional style knot, two and five eighths inch bound brim, and a four and a half inch crown tapering to about four inches in the back giving this fedora a very raked look and style for days. In fact, this classy and classic style fedora was the inspiration behind the second hat I had made by Michael Miller at Northwest Hats. This one I had done in a deep sage green with tone matching green ribbon and binding and a uniquely designed and highly contrasting lime green knot. But it wasn't the first hat that I challenged Mike to build for me. This, crossed between a low top hat and a gambler style hat, was the first project Mike and I worked on together. It's beaver fur with the hair left a little long, so it shines wonderfully in the light. When considering this hat, I knew that I wanted something that, well of a traditional shape, was unique to my style. I wanted to incorporate some leather while also tying in a vintage and again traditional ribbon and brim binding. I think Mike pulled it off quite well and not only did his work inspire me to work on a second hat with him, the fedora I showed you earlier, but it also inspired Jessica to get the girls together for matching shaped but uniquely and individually styled hats. The three of them looking sharp in their custom rabbit fur fedora deserves a thumbs up so smash that like button for them. And stay tuned for more of Mike's hats on Jedi TV because we have something special in the works. And that brings us to about halfway through my hat collection. Everything else we'll see from here on is either off the shelf or vintage. And we'll kick off with a look at the Stetsons in my collection. I have a total of five, including the Western we looked at earlier. Also by Stetson is these two 
Tehachapi loop fedoras. Their one and three quarter inch brims are quite a bit narrower than most of the other fedoras in my collection, but there are times when I prefer that style and it's always good to have options in your wardrobe. I reshaped the crown of the black one into a diamond. It was my first time experimenting with shaping hats and I think it came out okay. Next up is the Stetsonian. It's a vintage Stetson that I had the brim trimmed down to two and a half inches to match the dimensions and style of a couple of the other fedoras in my collection. An interesting side note about this Stetson, it was originally sold at Portland, Oregon's John Helmer store, which was right down the street from Kook's Beauty School, and it's where I purchased this red Stetson Derby. This is a wool derby, one of the few wool hats I still own. I prefer beaver or even rabbit over the feel of wool, but the cost-effective options for a quality red derby are pretty limited, and I didn't want to go custom since it's only worn on rare and special occasions, just like my green derby by Scala, which is again, a wool hat. But for those special occasions, it works fine, just like the other Scala in my collection, the Mad Hatter. This is a fun hat and it really dresses up the right outfit. Speaking of dressing up, next in my collection is this vintage Knox Homburn. This hat can really set off an outfit. In fact, I'm certain that the addition of this hat to an outfit has won me a couple of best dressed awards at cowboy action shooting competitions. I could wear the same outfit with a derby or a bowler, but I think that the Homburg style just kicks it up that extra notch. On the flip side, I wouldn't necessarily wear the Homburg with jeans on a daily basis, whereas I often do that with a bowler, like my vintage black Dobbs bowler hat. This Dobbs hat was given to me by my pard Mudflat Mike. It has a narrow one and a half inch brim, a four and a half inch crown, and Based on a little internet research, I'd guess it was probably made sometime in the 1920s. Interesting side note, I actually had a Dobbs hat box from the same era in my collection. Another vintage hat in my collection is this National City Fedora in brown. It shares the same dimensions as my custom art faucet and my vintage Stetsonian. It's not of the same quality though. And while I don't know much about this particular hat, I would guess it is probably rabbit rather than beaver. It still sheds moisture well, but it doesn't have the same feel as the other vintage hats in my collection. Next up is this Outback hat from Australia. This hat came to me used. I reshaped it and had this band put on it. As one of the many daily wear hats in my collection, it gets a lot of use, but I'm not as fond of this band on this hat as I thought I'd be, so I'm looking for an alternative, probably something either beaded or with turquoise. I haven't decided yet, but it needs something other than what's on it now. Another hat that was given to me and gets worn on a regular basis is this Biltmore Hats Duma. I, I know it looks like Puma, but it says Duma, even though it looks like it has a Puma. It started life as a dress hat, but I saw it more as this bluesy cowboy style, so I asked Mike Miller to shape it for me, and I absolutely loved the way it turned out. Another great story of a hat that was gifted to me, and I absolutely treasure, is this Head & Homes hat that I call my lethal hat. And really, the story of how I came into possession of this leather hat could be an entire episode of its own. I've told it elsewhere though, so I'll give you all the condensed version here. My pard Lethal Less was given the hat. He didn't really think that it fit his style, but I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. I just knew it fit my style. So I offered to buy it from Less, and mostly just for fun. I mean, he didn't want the hat, and I did, but he also didn't want to just sell something that was gifted to him. I knew that, so neither of us was exactly serious at first. But this joke went on for years. Every time I'd run into Les, I'd offer to buy the hat from him and he would raise his asking price. 
And I don't remember what the price of the hat ended up being at the end of our negotiations, but I never did end up buying it. So now y'all are probably seeing that it's currently on my head and in my collection. You probably figure I just plucked it off from Les's head. What actually ended up happening was Les was moving across country. And on the last day I saw him before he moved, he asked if I still wanted the hat. Well, of course I did, but I was a little afraid of the now several hundred dollar price we had negotiated over the years. But then Les just took it off his head, handed it to me and said, it's yours. He didn't want anything for it. He just knew how much I wanted it since we had teased back and forth for probably four or five years. And it's just one heck of a great memory. And to this day, I don't put this hat on without thinking about old Les. And I know he watches this show, so thanks again, Les. And that brings us to the final few hats in my collection. These are all straw hats, most of them mass produced off the shelf style. But these hats that I picked up for whatever reason at the time have ended up serving me well and stayed in my collection for that reason. Starting with this straw boater. There are very few opportunities to wear a boater, but I do find them and I do wear it. Then there are these modern style straw cowboy hats, one in brown and a nice Pendleton straw cowboy hat in black. I think the black one is a Tim McGraw special edition. It's actually pretty good quality and it's seen a lot of wear. Next is this Peter Grimm hat that I bought one afternoon when Jess and I were walking on the beach in Marina Del Rey. For whatever reason, I didn't have an appropriate hat for that weather and found this one in a little hat shop on the beach. It fit, it was super comfortable and offered me protection from the sun without being too warm. So I've kept it and I still find occasion to wear it. Now, speaking of protection from the sun, how about this? The final hat in my current collection is this giant straw hat. With a brim of just over six inches, I bring my own shade when I wear this hat. Plus, it's signed by Pam Tillis, so that's kind of cool. And finally, as promised, here's a look at the flat caps currently in my collection. The latest edition is this green wool newsboy by Finian and a black Gatsby by Brixton. These are good, versatile hats, excellent for driving and everyday wear. And the wool newsboy, it's very warm when out in the cold weather. So that wraps up my current collection as of the upload date of this episode in 2021. As you can see, when I designed this area for my hats, I did leave room for expansion in my collection. If you're a hatter with a product you'd like me to review, feel free to contact me and we'll make that happen. If you all enjoyed this look at my hat collection, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking that like button. And if you've just discovered this channel through this video, then be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my adventures under these hats. I'm Jed, this is Jedi TV, and I'll see you in some other place in some other time.